Art Fleming is probably best known for his 12 years on the Ultimate Game Show. That's my, my description, Jeopardy. And here in St. Louis, he's also known for his trivia show on Sunday nights at uh, KMOX Radio. And in between all that is a career of many jobs, and we'll try to cover as much of that as, as we can. Art, right, I just, there are so many areas we could go in and probably spend a half hour on. Oh, at point. least. Oh, <laughs> at least. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank I, you for the privilege of being on your show, John. Let me start with, uh, you, you talked about that. Everybody who, who hears you here in St. Louis probably thinks that's all you do. That, oh, that no, you no. I do a, <laughs> a, a two-hour comedy show on KMOX Radio, right. Saturday mornings from 9 to 11, and the trivia show, Sunday nights from 9 until noon. The rest of the time, I'm spokesman for several companies throughout the United States, namely one called Certain Teed Corporation. Okay. A lot of people, uh, the general public is, is not familiar with the name Certain Teed. It's Certain T -E, e D. And they are one of the leading manufacturers of uh, insulation, roofing, replacement windows, siding, you name it. Mm -hmm. And uh, my particular job is to, uh, as a concerned homeowner, is to tell people about the need for insulation in their home. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of that. Uh, does that all mean? Over the does country. that take? Does, I mean, do you have to study that to? to, to yeah, mean, over the year you uh, pick, pick up uh, a lot of information, and uh, when they are uh, in research for a new product. Uh, they keep you posted as to what's happening. And mm -hmm. the new product they have is called Insulsafe 3. Uh, it is a fiberglass insulation. It is blown in so that it fits into every nook and cranny in your attic and your side walls and in the flooring. And uh, it is uh, non-corrosive, non-combustible. It's not a nesting place for pests and vermin. And uh, you learn this uh, by just working with the company. You, know. the, the, you go in for seminars or oh yeah, seminars like and that. conventions, and explain the difference and R factors and uh, why we need more insulation and why in some areas you need more than in others. You know that kind mm. of thing. Is, that, is it the kind of thing where uh, obviously they say this is Art Fleming, and so when you go to one of their shows, you stand out front there and you kind mm -hmm. of you, you go through what you basically what you went through with me. That's right. Scenario. Yeah. But do people, when people come up to you, that's, that, is that the first thing they ask oh, you no, about or the last no, thing? No, 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 that's the last thing, you know. <laughs> Why are you here as the yeah. last thing, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, no, they all, I, I started in this business when I was four years old. I was on the Broadway stage in a musical called The Great Waltz. And it was at the Center Theater in New York, and it was the musical adaptation of Emperor Franz Joseph, who was the emperor of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Well, uh, I uh, don't remember uh, the lines I had. I had four lines. But I do remember the little uniform that I had. The emperor introduced me to the grand court at the grand ballroom, and man, I was thrilled, even at four. <laughs> but uh, I continued in my career, and I've done everything you can do in this business, from radio, television, carnivals, circuses, you name it, I've done it. Yeah. You talk and about, excuse me for interrupting you, but you, no, you, you talk about on the trivia program, you talk about a lot about uh, some of the acting that you did, some of the days. Oh, yeah, I started, as I say, acting at four years yeah. old. But I've been in 48 theatrical motion pictures. I co-starred with Gregory Peck and MacArthur. I was in Airplane 2 and Twilight Zone. I was in a movie with uh, the president, Ronald Reagan, called The Last Outpost. Mm -hmm. But I get killed off at the first five minutes of the picture. You know. <laughs> but then I starred in three television series, The Flying Tigers, the story of Claire Chenault and the uh, uh, Flyers Who Helped China. Yeah. Uh, then I starred in a series uh, called International Detective, which was the true story of the William Burns Detective Agency, the largest investigative force in the world. And then I starred in a very popular series called The Californians. Mm -hmm. I played Jeremy Pitt, and I had the brocaded vest and the string tie and the derringer up my sleeve, you know. Yeah. And then I've guested on over a thousand shows uh, on television. But uh, Jeopardy came along, and the only reason I ever did Jeopardy was a unique idea uh, where Julianne Griffin, Merv Griffin's ex-wife, came up with the idea of giving contestants the answers and letting them come up with the questions. So I said to myself, gee, I never did a game show. I think it might be kind of nice to do it. Let's yeah. try it. Figuring it'll run. Three months, six months, you know, yeah. fade out, fade in, 12 and a <laughs> half years later, yeah. 2,858 shows, it is the classic game show of television, right. the start of the trivia craze that we're going through right yeah, now. I know that one of the things that people probably ask you more than anything else is whether or not, and of course everybody knows in town that it runs on a different station, so I'm not mm -hmm. going to dwell on it, but it is, it's a fascinating history. They have to ask you, how do you compare uh, the guy who's doing it now? Alex Trebek. Alex, Alex Trebek. is a very dear friend of mine. And I talked with him, oddly enough, yesterday. I was on a... Uh, radio show in Chicago, and they woke him up at 6.30, and we talked for a good little 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it is a different show than when we did it. Uh, it is a lot easier, I think, uh, the fact that only one of the three contestants is the money winner, and the other two, I think, is a little kind of chintzy, because... Uh, <laughs> I'm not thrilled about that. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, when they tell you throughout the game, hey, you've got $1,000, you've got $2,000, you've got $4,000. You really don't have that. And then... Halfway through the game, he says, only the top money winner will receive the money. The other two will get a year's supply of dog food yeah, or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So 
I think when the player ends up with $3,995 and he's in second place and the leader has $4,000, for the sake of $5, he's blown the whole thing. And he gets, you know, <laughs> right. he gets a uh, foot powder. <laughs> right. for a year. I think it's kind of ridiculous. But, yeah. And the show is very easy, too, I think. Yeah, well, you know, it's a funny thing about that. Uh, when you see people put in that position, I know that like everybody else who plays any kind of game show at home, it doesn't matter what the game mm -hmm. show is, it looks sitting there without the pressure as if, as a contestant, if you were the contestant, yeah. and we all project ourselves into that role, it looks mm -hmm. like, well, I can answer that question, or what a dummy you're oh, thinking. Yeah, no. is, that the, is that the attraction you think of the audience? To well, the yes, shows? it's a mental exercise. People yeah. play the game not because of the money or the prizes they win. They want to prove to themselves that they have some level of smarts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, all of your life you're indoctrinated. If you don't know something, ask. Ask. Well, somebody comes along and says, don't ask. Here's the answer. What's the question? Well, this discombobulates your thinking. You know, you start thinking backwards. And it took me a good two weeks to start phrasing things in the form of a question. I always thought, Arne, it was difficult for any game show host, and uh, I, I have no knowledge of this, mm -hmm. that business at all, uh, to come out to appear in command, but you're dealing with different personalities, same rules, but yeah. they're gotta, they've got to be stretched and bent and molded to fit the various personalities of the people. That's when uh, people ask me, weren't you bored doing the same show yeah. for 2,800 odd uh, programs? I said, no, because the audience was different every day, the players were different, the answers and questions were different. A game show host is basically a traffic cop. He has to put all the components together. If he loses his concentration, everything starts to crumble around him. And as far as the contestants are concerned, you must find a little something about each of the three players that you can attune to or that you like about him. Uh, you cannot pick a favorite. You know, I hope yes. that number three wins right. the game. You can't ever do that, even though internally you might feel that way, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's something about each person that you have to like. Yeah. And isn't you must concentrate. Yeah, isn't it, uh, isn't it difficult, though, uh, sometimes when you run into somebody that you don't like? Uh, and I, when I say don't like, I mean their initial impressions, let's say they have a negative impact on you. you say, yeah, well, well then you really. have to uh, consider the fact that you're a professional and they're what we call civilians. And uh, if your attitude is right, and it better be right because that little lens bores oh, through your soul sure and does. everybody at home know, hey, there's a phony, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go with the fact that, gee whiz, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Like when they're wrong, gee, I'm sorry. Yeah. And really mean, you're sorry, right. you know, and uh, you've got to do that. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you come off as a heavy. And there are several guys in the business now who are MCs who come off. Yeah, heavy, it can be know, a problem. I could drop a name or two. Yeah. I, I won't, but it's, no. it, is, it is interesting we how, how people mm -hmm. do uh, forget where they are, or at least seem to get a charge out of putting down the, uh, the yeah, civilian. Right. Uh, it's not, you, you did this, though, in a time when, did you, was your program live? When, when oh, you yeah, did no, we were You did it live. Yeah. We did it live for big, a short period of time, for about a, a month, and then uh, we taped everything. And mm -hmm. very rarely would we uh, edit tape. Yeah. Uh, sometime a light would blow or a camera would uh, stop functioning. Mm -hmm. So we had to edit the tape, right. but very, very rarely would we tape yeah. uh, over again. Yeah, that, that's the thing about it, that people don't understand that live, the difference between live television and tape television. Mm -hmm. And right now, today, because of the sophistication of the way tape looks, for example, this program's being taped, right. uh, people will come up to me and they will ask me odd questions like, gee, I just saw you on a minute ago. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think the public really understands, even with all the video tape oh, right. VCRs, really understands the dynamics of this business. Well, not only that, uh, people have come to me and say, uh, gee, I saw you, you did a minute commercial the other day. Right. How long did it take you to shoot? You know, and you tell them three weeks, and I said, it was a minute, <laughs> a minute commercial. And you say, yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't take a minute. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is amazing. Let me ask you about, uh, about the trivia thing. I mean, I, I, I could see where working with Jeopardy would, would, would pique your interest in, in, oh, yeah, in very much little so. bits of fact and information. But that really is uh, something that you had in your, in your soul before then. Oh, yeah, I have kind of a kinky little mind. Uh, uh, I read everything from cigar band labels yeah. to uh, labels on bottles and uh, uh, boxes of cereal and stuff. And the computer mind stores that somewhere in the deep recesses of your brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, 10 years later, somebody will say something and all of a sudden, yeah. you say, oh, no, no, it was this and this and this, you yeah. know. Sure. And it, uh, that's what happened with me. Yeah. I, I think I, was, I, was gonna, I told you before we started taping that I was the same way, that I was a person who read everything and mm -hmm. wanted to know all the credits in the movies, even though right. I had no idea what a key grip did. That's right. I'm not sure I still know what a key grip does. I think he's a He's the head stage head, yeah. <laughs> he grips the stuff and moves it around. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it's just one of those yeah. things that, that I, I, I had this penchant for wanting to know little bits of, of fact. And now it's become big business. Oh, very much so, Aren't yeah. you kind of sorry you didn't cash in on the, uh, uh, with a game? No, no. I, uh, you know, I like to do new and fresh things constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm uh, always researching, gee, I've never done this. I'd love to do that, you yeah. know. And... Uh, uh, to me, onward and upward. You know, I did 12 years. They asked me to return with Jeopardy, but uh, 
they wanted me to move back to California, and I said, no, 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 thank that, you very much. That's another interesting thing about you, because we've all associated you with a lot of network programs out of New York, out of mm -hmm. California, not to mention the movie thing, all that. All of a sudden, uh, you know, a few years ago, you turn up here, and everybody, I know I just asked you, yeah. I thought, uh, before we went on the air, if you were still living here, and you tell yeah. me you moved here. Now, I moved I'm here in February of 1980. I'm going to ask you why. Well, why because uh, I couldn't <laughs> understand the uh, St. Louis people thinking uh, uh, always, hey, why did you move to St. Louis? You know, they were always very negative about the city, and I couldn't understand why. You're the hub of the wheel here in the United States. You can go in any direction, literally in minutes. You can go to Chicago in less than an hour on the north. You can go to New York in an hour and 20 minutes on the east, to Dallas an hour and 10 minutes on the south, and two hours and 20 minutes to California. Not mm -hmm. only that, but you gain two hours going west, <laughs> see? So that uh, St. Louis has a lot to offer. It's not maybe as large as New York or Chicago or L.A., but uh, instead of having uh, 10 symphony orchestras, we happen to have the second best symphony orchestra in uh, the country. No, which yeah. is not bad. We've got <coughs> professional uh, football and baseball and hockey and soccer. The restaurants, of course, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll agree, are some of the best in the world. Yeah. Born and um, you have everything you want here, from the uh, ultra-intellectual, from the symphonies to museums to libraries, or at the other end, if you want to go flea marketing or rafting down the Merrimack, you've got that yeah. here, you know. And uh, it's very concentrated. From my home, I could be in the airport in 12 minutes, or I could go to work in 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in New York. Right. Are people surprised when they see you? Because after all, even if they don't know your, your name, and you walk through an airport or some other place where oh, people yeah. tread, uh, they have to do a double take. They, they always do, yeah. That's funny. They get it from the voice, first of all. Yeah. And uh, you'll be in a crowded room, and all of a sudden somebody will turn quickly and say, sure. Hey, you're right <laughs> funny, aren't you? Yeah. Or they'll say, do you know anybody ever tell you you look like this guy on television? You know, <laughs> I get that a lot myself. I've even had to show my uh, uh, driver's license and credit. <laughs> they say you're kidding me. No, come on, come on, show me. You know, you have to show them. You know, yeah. it's, uh, do you, it's you obviously never get. I was going to say you yeah. never get tired of it because I, I no. uh, I notice that for sometimes for some of us yeah. in this business, it it can be a problem. But I, I always, I've seen you in this situation. Yeah. Um, I think down at Keener Plaza once, so you were right, milking yeah. a cow or something. Right. Yeah. I, uh, oh, I never will forget that because Bob Hardy <laughs> was my opponent and he's a farmer. Right. Now I'm a city boy. I didn't know what a cow looked like until I mil milked it that day. And I just kept telling the cow, I love you. I love you. Well, I beat Bob Hardy. He was bad as he could be with me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I remember th th yeah. that particular thing. And here you are milking this cow and everybody, I mean, my, I have this image of you, uh, this, this intellect you see. And oh, sure. Yeah. And there, here you are milking this cow, and people are, are standing there looking uh, like, oh, there he is, he's milking yeah. the cow. It's, well, see, it's again, strange. Yeah. this is something I've never done. I wanted to do it. I wanted to milk a cow. Yeah. What about again? You want to <laughs> well, I don't mind. I mean, you know, I like to try milking something else. <laughs> it was one of those, uh, again, I think that it's, in, it, you obviously <laughs> enjoyed, enjoyed doing I enjoy everything I do. Well, yeah. you know, uh, I'm, I wake up in the morning, thank God I made it through the night, yeah. and what is uh, the good Lord uh, going to give me tonight, or yeah. today is an experience, a new experience. I leave here this afternoon, fly to Kansas City, and uh, fly back tomorrow to do my comedy show on Saturday. Right. Uh, and you meet a lot of people at the airport. I love watching people. They're all so different and all have so much to offer. And that's what keeps me positive and enthusiastic, really. Yeah, what about the, you, 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 you really said some great things about the city of St. Louis, and, oh, and this, yeah. this is my home. I was born and raised here. And I remember when I was in the Army traveling around the country, and I would say to people I was from St. Louis, and, and I would get those ne that negative, you yeah. know, they thought we were all tough, and we were all rowdy, and yeah. we were all out to, um, to do bad things to them or something. I'm not you sure know. why we got that reputation as being well, a wild Well, New Yorkers city. think that there's nothing uh, except the Rocky Mountains and the Mississippi River between yeah. New York and L.A. Yeah, well, know? that's certainly true. Yeah. And uh, L.A., they're in a different world all their own. <laughs> they're, you know, ooh, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, a lot of people uh, think, you know, gateway to the West. This is where you hook up the uh, brace of horses and the stagecoach and mm -hmm. go, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a very fine, chic little town. And yeah. uh, I've always said it was the best-kept secret in America. Let's keep it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I guess the, probably the, the people at the Regional Commerce and Growth might want to differ with you a little bit. Yeah, no, that, I, as far I, as the I'm secret is concerned. saying that in jest, but I think it's a great city. And uh, if things happen in the future that uh, uh, for whatever reason we have to move on, uh, we'll never cut our ties uh, in St. Louis mm -hmm. because we've got some dear, dear friends. Some of our closest friends that we've ever had are based right here in St. Louis. All right, what do you, uh, I, I just wanted to give people some idea of, of what kind of a schedule you have. Just, just, oh. tell, me, just tell me what the next 72 hours or so, the next week or so hold, hold for you. Well, to give you an idea, this past week on uh, Sunday I uh, uh, did the comedy show on KMOX Radio and at midnight I finished. 
At 7 o'clock uh, Monday morning, I took a plane to Milwaukee. I was in Milwaukee uh, all of that Monday, Monday night left and went to Chicago. I was in Chicago uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday, last night I flew in uh, Wednesday to come and do the lottery uh, spin on Thursday mornings. Then I'm doing the show here and uh, I fly to Kansas City. I'm in Kansas City all Friday, leave Friday afternoon, come back to do the Saturday morning comedy show uh, 9 to 11. Sunday, uh, I fly out in the afternoon and go to Philadelphia and I do my uh, trivia show via phone from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And even though it's on 9 to midnight here in Philadelphia, it's 10 to 1. Right. So at 7 o'clock, I'm going to be uh, doing a couple of television and radio shows in Philadelphia. Pittsburgh uh, uh, Tuesday, Hartford Wednesday, fly back Thursday for the lottery spin. Uh, Friday, I fly to uh, uh, Detroit and do a show for Chrysler. I'm there. Uh, uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, fr Friday and Friday night, fly back Friday night to do the comedy show. And then and Saturday right night, there. I'm being uh, honored as the king of St. Charles, discoverer of St. Charles. <laughs> my wife and I are king and queen. Oh, is that all right? Well, yeah, congratulations, because yeah. that's well, another you. wonderful community. So that's my next few days, yeah. you know, and uh, I love it. I really yeah, do. I was, uh, well, I was trying to, to, to give people some idea that because they, they, they get the impression that all you do, it's like people will ask me when, they, when, they, yeah. when I run into them, they'll say, well, Gee, uh, you only work on the weekends, yeah, and, right. and they kind of like it's like well, looking on the nose, Jim. Yeah. Some kids, someone's going to well. What do you mean? I mean, I work every day, and you only work the weekends. They don't realize that I, I have a full week just like they do, and sometimes I guess more full than their week. Well, they'll they'll come over to me and say, "You get paid for talking? <laughs> That's all you do is talk. <laughs> don't you get up and do something?" You know. Oh, we, it's a we, great world. We got to take a break here. Okay. Art, Art Fleming is our guest here on Perception, and we've got a lot more to talk about it. And it may go just any old way. So stay with us. <laughs> back and we're just kind of chatting off the air it just just, just happens that way sometimes oh, yeah, gosh, yeah. We, <laughs> we could talk here for hours uh, that's absolutely true yeah. let me let me ask you about the about the trivia program because you work with uh, david strauss, david strauss yeah. um, unbelievable human being david yeah tell me a little bit about it. i've never met him but i know he was at well South he's West a High history school. teacher yeah. and he teaches at uh, the naval rotc uh, magnet school mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't know where he gets his information but he comes up with things i'm sitting across the desk from him and i'm in may he'll tell you the license plate uh, number of the car that was on the moon, you know, mm -hmm. who cares, you know, but <laughs> he knows, and uh, the name of the dog in some long lost series of 50 years ago, right. and uh, uh, what was the name of the, uh, the number of the street address of uh, some killer. It's unbelievable, and I'm constantly doing double takes with this man. Yeah, it's an interesting thing with that, because a lot of people, you, you do have to use reference books and reference manuals, but a lot of this stuff, oh, you he can comes up with it right out of your head, right? Yeah, you can't remember everything yeah. about everything, and uh, many times David uh, will say, gee, I don't know it, but I'll have it for you next week. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is where do you start? Where do you begin looking for somebody that you never even heard of, you know? Yeah. Are you ever yeah. amazed, because sometimes I am, about what people want to know about the answers people yeah, want? Right. Uh, we'll get questions uh, how uh, people have died uh, in history mm -hmm. in the past and uh, what did they die from, what were their last words, where are they buried, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's uh, they're ill or what, but uh, uh, there are yes. everything interests uh, different people. Yeah, you go to you flea markets and you know people collect matchbooks, <laughs> people collect uh, thimbles. Yeah. You wonder why, yeah. but. Well, well, I wonder where, where they're know. going to put that information, and, it, and then I often wonder how about, about cataloging information because I know I have my own. Uh, I don't know. I was always intrigued by the fact that that uh, Rogers Hornsby hit 424 in 1924, and that uh, Roger Maris hit 61 home right. runs in 1961. I don't know why. I guess it's the, it's I know. Yeah. the numbers are symmetrical, but to me, that's significant trivia. Yeah. <laughs> well, you learn in life what you want to learn. Yeah. Uh, people said, you know, when uh, you were emceeing uh, Jeopardy, you must have become a genius. I said, yeah, but I needed a map to find my way home, you know. <laughs> no, but you remember the things you want to remember. My favorite categories were history, music, literature, motion pictures. I didn't care a thing about myth and legend. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't care what Zeus did to Apollo or Pericles and Demosthenes, you know, but there are some people that just start yeah. crying at the thought of all of this <laughs> myth and legend, you know. It's, it's, it's funny. <laughs> but they're, 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 of course, you could, it sounds silly now because 
when you say you could trivialize anything, I mean, trivia yeah, yeah. used to mean it was, it was not important, but trivia, it's very important now because it's very big business. It's a mental exercise. Yeah. It is a mental exercise. I had a dear friend of mine who would uh, drive people. He used to take the commuter train from Scarsdale, New York, to New York City every day. It was a 40-minute trip. And so Monday mornings, he would take the Sunday Times crossword puzzle, and he'd be sitting with a crowd of uh, riders, people he didn't know, and he would take a pen out, and he didn't even know how to do the crossword puzzle. But he would just sit there and put letters in this thing, you know, and everybody would be looking. This guy's a genius. He was just filling in all the squares, you know. He, they weren't correct, but that's what he did. And everybody else around him thought, of you, oh, my God. Well, you know, what's funny about crossword puzzles, you mentioned that, because I, uh, I have never finished one in my life. I have never been able to work one, and I, I don't think I'm... I'm me, uh, me. I, I mean... I don't think that people who work them are, are especially bright, but they must be brighter than I am because they Me too. You know, I'm the worst game player. And uh, several uh, months back, I was invited to uh, Julius Hunter's home to play Jeopardy. Oh, I was a disaster. Oh, I was terrible. I, I cannot play the game. I can be the yeah. traffic cop, but <laughs> yeah. I cannot play that game or any game. I'm not a game player. And uh, that, that's a, well, in yeah. a way, maybe that's the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. You because know. They, you really can't be biased and you Don, we're all ignorant except on different subjects yeah you know? i guess that's very very true that's, that's a very very good point what about the mediums that you i mean the media that you've worked in you've worked in uh, you've worked in tv you've worked, all, in yeah. movie, you've worked in radio you got a favorite art well no everything i do is my favorite they're all different uh, in the making of motion pictures uh, for an actor you're always shooting out of sequence uh for instance if the beginning and the end of the picture took place on this set and you had to be normal at the beginning, but then by the end of the picture, you're crazy, mm -hmm. bananas. But you still have to shoot that scene, those two scenes, the beginning and the end, in the set. When you finished, the set was destroyed. Yeah. What it does for an actor, it doesn't give him a chance to build into his character, like on a Broadway uh, stage. Mm -hmm. You know, you can slowly go from normal, uh, normal to uh, some uh, crazy guy, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, there are different problems in all of the, the different medias. Uh, I love radio because you can be yourself. You don't have to get all dialed up with makeup and sure. be sure everything is just in place. Uh, I love uh, the fact that we can talk to people and just be ourselves. We are right now, right. only the cameras are taking our pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, radio uh, has always been one of my favorite uh, mediums. It, to me, Broadway on the stage is, uh, for some people, they're very excited to be actors. But I cannot do uh, the same role, the same look, the same line, open the door on this line, put the glass down on this line, same thing, eight days a week, week in and week out, and if it's a hit, mm -hmm. you're there for two years doing the same thing, you know. Sure. That would, sure. it's not my milieu, it's not my makeup to yeah. do that. Did you, is there anybody in the business that uh, you say that you, who influenced you, you think, or that you had particularly admir particular ad admiration for? Well, oddly enough, they were not in the business. Uh, like Norman Vincent Peale mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Uh, Robert Schuller. They're very good friends of mine. Uh, Norman Vincent Peale married us. But uh, I love their philosophy. I love the way they uh, can take the smallest little uh, situation and blow it up with words and the mm -hmm. movements of their hands. Uh, to me, uh, they are exciting individuals, and I'm glad I was uh, privileged to be a part of their lives. Well, it's interesting because to both of those gentlemen that you mentioned, yeah. uh, words words right, are very yeah. important to them and the way they look and the way they think and their philosophy that's uh, to me uh, life is too short you might as well do the best you can uh, at the moment you're living it uh, enjoy it uh, think positively and try to help your fellow man it's maybe sounds goody-goody to a lot of people but uh, that's the way i feel no it's a pretty simple philosophy yeah. it seems to be uh, that sometimes we can get so complex that we, oh, we yeah. make ourselves unhappy trying mm -hmm. to simplify what we've you know seen. life is not a bowl of cherries you're going to have uh, a lot of problems uh, you're going to have sickness and you're going to have death of loved ones it's not the problem, but it's how you react to the problem. Your attitude towards whatever happens, that makes you what you are, mm -hmm. you know. You know, it'd be so easy, I think, uh, for you, if you wanted to, with, with, with given your record, given your notoriety, given the fact that, that people know who you are. Mm -hmm. You're a you're celebrity. Whether you wanted to be or not, yeah, you are. Right, yeah. And I think we all, when we open, that, we open this box and get into mm -hmm. jobs, we know what, the, what it means. Right. But it, it would be so easy for you to shut yourself away from that public if you wanted to, like, like, like oh, yeah. some, some people in the, in the line oh, might do. I've got some very dear friends, uh, very large names in this business, and we argue many times about uh, giving autographs. Mm -hmm. I know some big stars that some poor soul will say, can I have your autograph or have your picture? Get away, you know. And they say, all we, uh, all we owe you is a performance because you bought the price of a ticket. That's wrong. They don't. You're in the public eye, 
And what does it take? How much of your life does it take to be nice to your fellow man? You know? Yeah, I, it's a philosophy I've it's, subscribed to. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a well. very simple thing. Uh, try to think of the other person, and it's amazing what you will get back yeah. by thinking of the other Aren't, person. Aren't uh, I've taken up a half hour of your life? Uh, You're kidding. It's gone already? <laughs> and I appreciate it. What time are we doing this tomorrow for next week? <laughs> Can we fly make back here to do it? <laughs> well, if they made 17 hours of America, we could do at least as well. Oh, yeah. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. Hey, Don, thank you so much. Thank I you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk again. Thank you. God bless. Okay, thank you, sir. Art Fleming has been our guest, and uh, he's been uh, a little bit of this to everything, so trying to, trying to say what he is, what he does, <laughs> would be very impossible. We certainly thank you for being here. One thing he is is a very nice man. Well, thank you. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Good day.